and welcome to Living It Up Local. And today we're speaking to Natasha Ulanovsky. She is the musical director at Congregation Beth Israel, but she's most well known for her organ playing. And she's here to talk about a concert on March the 9th at Congregation Beth Israel called Bach. Bach to Shul, which I think has double meaning. Why Bach to Shul? We have expression back to school. So I just wanted to have a kind of a attractive name for the program, which might make people interested to go to it. Also, um, I don't think organ is very popular at Beth Israel congregation yet. And why do you say that? Why do you say it's not uh, popular? Because when we have organ concerts, not many people come. So I would like more people to come. And uh, Well, what about in the world? Is organ, because it's an old-fashioned instrument, is it popular in the world? Uh, it, it was very popular back in Soviet Union because the organ was forbidden after the 1917 revolution and a lot of churches were closed. It was a communistic regime. And um, in 1970s, uh, all of a sudden there was a renaissance of organ music and the organs started to be built again. There were some old organs still saved in churches in Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Mm, because these republics I think uh, they joined Soviet Union after the Second World War. So Beth Israel had a major renovation project, I remember, years ago to revive the Austin, the Austin organ. Uh, there was a major renovation which finished, was finished, completed in 2006 by Austin Service Masters, by great master Alex Belair and Bon Smith. And now it is in good condition. We have four manual Austin organ, and it, it, we received um, acknowledgement that this is historic organ in USA. So I think Bach will sound really good on this organ. I would like more people to know actually about so this treasure. The but temple. why why is Beth Israel doing uh, Johann Sebastian Bach? I mean, he's a reform. He's a Protestant. He's reform Protestant. He's not Jewish. Why a particular interest in um, Johann Sebastian Bach? Uh, from my experience, Jewish people like to hear Bach. They do? <laughs> yes. Uh, I attended some concerts um, at the Trinity Lutheran Church in New York. Every Sunday, there were performed cantatas, cantatas by Bach, which are vocal pieces with orchestra and choir. And I saw a lot of Jewish people in congregation. I think it is a beautiful music, sophisticated music. And um, also I think this music, this is the style is called, it is polyphonic. It's polyphonic. not po po polyphonic. There is a homophonic music when we have a melody and um papa, um papa accompaniment. But this is not that simple. This music has several voices which talk in the same time. And they have kind of linear linear development. And that's called poly... It is called polyphonic. polyphonic. And I think this fact is attractive to, to Jewish mentality too. Um, and also... Has now why? A that's a loaded statement. Why is that attractive to the Jewish mentality? Oh, nobody knows why. Nobody. Because maybe because of the long history and maybe because of the chance, maybe because of the chromatic and um, chromatic um, language of uh, Jewish instrumental music. And there, there's a lot of uh, chromatic language in, in Bach music. But I remember um, years ago, you mentioned that when you were 15, they almost threw you out of school because you didn't want to play Bach. This is and right. And now you're such a Bach aficionado. Right. What changed? First of all, um, to understand a style of the composer, um, I feel like I need to play a lot of its music. And second, I, need, I needed a good exposure. When I was, when I was um, 18 years old, I entered uh, Odessa Conservatory, and the new organ was installed in Odessa Conservatory. And the person who introduced the instrument, it was inauguration of Odessa Conservatory, Zauer instrument, Johann Keller. 
came from Germany. And he played Passacaglia by Bach and Toccata and Fugue in, in F major. It impressed me so much, it just made me interested. So when you were 15, uh, there was something about the music you didn't like. I must, to complete my exams, um, it was obligation to present piece by Bach, and sonata. You were, and you were 15 years and old. And I was 15 years old, <laughs> and I didn't like this music. I thought it was very boring. Probably my teacher didn't introduce me correctly, or just had to play only one piece by Bach, and I couldn't get it. Why, why, why is it so boring? And now? And then I studied, I studied actually a lot of music by Bach, gradually. I came, it started from Spark, which I received from Johann Keller, and then I I studied music with Leonid Roisman in Moscow Conservatory, with Leopoldus Digris in Vilnius, which is a great Bach lover. Now, isn't Bach well known also for the Halloween music? Oh, yeah, one piece, one piece. Yeah, yeah how does that right. go? Can you, what's that? <laughs> <mel> <laughs> The kids love it. They always ask me to play horror music when they come to, I, sometimes I, I invite the kids from Beth Israel just to, cr to the organ crawl so they can just try to play the organ. And even I open the back door and let them go inside and see how the pipes are built and what pipes makes, make different sounds. They always ask me at the end, can you play the staccato by Bach? And so what about, what are you playing for Bach at the concert? What, 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 are um, the, uh, what is the selection? Actually, I will be playing to this Toccata. I will play Toccata D minor, the scary one, and I will play also Dorian, Toccata Dorian, uh, in D minor, which is in Dorian mode, which uh, was known um, being good for educating young generation. So these, these selections of music are pretty accessible to the public. I think so. Toccata, They're not eso it's not esoteric music. No, 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 no. This is very passionate music. And uh, also I play two arias from cantatas. Um, God's time is best. This is one cantata. I'll, I'll play aria from this. And uh, another cantata, uh, people know the, the theme, um, sheep may safely graze. Sheep? Sheep may safely graze. Sheep may safely graze. graze. Yes. Uh -huh. and, 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 and is that well known to people? Yes, know? it is very known. It is tum pa pa pum pa 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 pum pa pum pa 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 pum pa 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 dee dee. I don't have my voice today. Okay, so <coughs> this concert is going to be on March the 9th and it's preceding a Friday night service? Yes. It is. It will be about 40 minutes long program. And what time is the program? What time does it your program start? It starts at 6.45 p.m. 6.45. And about five minutes before the service, I will stop playing. And so the service starts at 7... 7.30. 7.30. And what else can you tell me about Johann Sebastian Bach that maybe I wouldn't know and maybe most people wouldn't know? Nobody knows what is the truth. Some Doric books telling us about Bach's family, that um, Bach had 20 children. Or 20, 20 children? 20, yes. He now had people are interested in that, <laughs> with all the same wife? No, two wives. One died, probably couldn't bear all of this, <laughs> and died. Uh, I, I think he had seven children from one wife and 13 children from another wife. And why so many children? Because he's not Catholic and he's not Jewish. He's Protestant Reformed. There's no... There's nothing that tells you you're supposed to have a lot of kids. Oh, he was probably just um, a religious man, and he believed if the nature gives a birth to a woman, so she has to fulfill the commands, the commands of the nature and commands of God. Uh, also, um, are any of his kids, uh, are any of his kids four known? Son, four sons, uh, four of his sons became also musicians. And of course, um, his um, Anna Magdalena, his second wife, she gave a lot of time uh, writing his music and also educating the kids. And there is an album, Anna Magdalena Bach, which is well known. He wrote special music, like eight, eight um, preludes and fugues, little preludes and fugues uh, for organ to educate his own kids. Uh, four, uh, four boys became musicians. Johann Christian, Wilhelm Friedemann, and uh, Karl Philipp Emanuel. 
So none of them are at the same level as him, as far as notoriety is no, concerned. But, but I think the most popular of them is Carl Philipp Emanuel. Carl Philipp Emanuel. And what is he well known for? He is well known for uh, um, writing um, kind of uh, sentimental, I would say, more sentimental music. Uh, this is uh, already a time of different style. It was called in German Empfandzimer Stil. Empfandzimer Stil, which is, um, it is, it is kind of under the sentiment. Under the sentiment. Under the sentiment. Yes. And what about, um, you hear all sorts of stories about musicians like Mozart. Mozart was known for the craziness. You know, they're just completely w wacko. But is Sebastian Bach known for any sort of crazy personality traits? Or yes, he, is, he was crazy. I think there was, he was prisoned for several months, several times. Uh, once he, he wanted to hear Dietrich Buxtehude. What is that? Dietrich Buxtehude is another uh, North German composer. Um, and he decided to walk, to walk to Lübeck. And uh, this walk probably would take him several, like, several, maybe even the whole months. So he asked uh, to be away um, like for, um, for six weeks, but he came back only like in four, in four months. And for this, he was put in prison. But put in prison for not? Yes, yes for, not, um, for not abating um, the order because he was employed. Um, he was employed by church, by school. And second but he time, was employed not to walk. He was employed. He was employed to play for the for the services and to educate children at the, in the religious school. He just didn't come in time, and so he was expected. It kind of ru ru ruined the the curriculum of the school. Probably. So they fired him. No, they didn't fire him. He was too good to fire. So what did they do? So they just put him in prison. Put him in prison. Prison for a certain time and then let him go and just continue his work. And another time he was... Was he famous in his time also? He in was, his time, was, he, he, was, was he well known? He was well known as a virtuoso organist, first of all, not as a composer. A lot of uh, his contemporary were thinking his music is too difficult. So it, he, was, he was composing music for the future. It was too difficult, too sophisticated. People liked more simple music. And actually, he always dreamed about getting a post of the chief organist in, in Hamburg. In, so is, in, the music in the too, is the music too sophisticated? It is sophisticated. But is it too sophisticated for Beth Israel? Um, what it, would you it say? Might be. It, it might, might be. be. It might be. But they also, they always have to have a challenge to grow. So I think uh, rather than come down for something everybody understands, I would... You want to raise, yes, raise yes, the exactly. population. I think so. I think it's educational. And also I like to talk before the program. I would like to give a little information about particular pieces. For example, I will be playing choral preludes and I have to explain about the choral preludes. What is it for? And uh, like arias, what, is, what cantata means? Well, what does cantata mean? Cantate means uh, in Latin, sing. To sing. sing. Sing, yes. So this, uh, wo this is a piece or the work for singing. But um, cantatas are known um, by being performed by the soloists and orchestra or soloists, choir and orchestra. And cantatas mostly in Bach's time, they were written for each Sunday. Each Sunday, Bach composed new cantata, which had several movements. It could have between four and eight movements. But your cantata that you're going to be performing... I will just play separate parts, separate parts of the cantata. Right, there will be no singer or soloist or... No. Bach wrote that every... his work was written for God. For God? For the name of God. He yes. was religious, you mentioned. He was very religious, every piece. He had several secular works, like coffee cantata, for example, about um, loving, love for coffee. <laughs> love for coffee. Love for coffee, it is. <laughs> or there is also like wedding cantata. Or, um, um, there are some, some secular pieces. Or the, my favorite pipe, it is called. My favorite pipe, he liked to smoke so he a was pipe. So he was a little bit uh, jocular. Yes, he's making yes, jokes. Yes. Right. But now he's perceived as a very serious 
a composer. He is serious. He's serious. Yes. And what about you? How are you about this Bach? Like, are you serious about Bach, or are you say, seeing it in a lighthearted fashion? It is my favorite composer. And also, I think I, was st I started to study Bach kind of in protest because I grew up during communistic regime, and um, there was something missing. I think people, people didn't know what, what, what else exists. So I feel like I can't touch the sky. So, so you were introducing was, Bach. You felt that I, it was I a rebel. I this music comes from cosmos. So for, for some reason, it was association. And when I started to study um, the text of this music with the biblical meanings, um, I understood there is another world. Is there biblical meanings in his work? Yeah, every, every piece has a biblical meaning. Even though the one oh, about I love coffee? Every piece in his sacred repertoire has certain biblical meaning. The program that you're playing this weekend, what is the biblical meaning of, the, of that program? Uh, first of all, um, because I play excerpts from different cantatas, so one was God's time is best. God's? God's Time is best. God's time, time is, is best. best. And we can understand as we want. It is a God's time and it's best. And we have to be happy. Because if we believe in God, we are in God's time. And um, second, uh, sheep, sheep may safely graze. That's right. You mentioned that. Yes. Sheep may safely and graze. It means just if God is watching over us, may we can live in pleasure. This was he was he an educated man, Sebastian Bach? Oh yes, he was educated. I visited his house where he was born. Um, oh, that must have been interesting. In Eisenach, and uh, when I was in school in, in Ukraine, I grew up in Odessa. I was told he was actually a baker. He was he came from baker family and he was poor. The truth is, he really he lost his parents when he was nine years old only, and he grew up with his brother who was. He moved to his brother, which was 14, and Bach started to, to play in his brother's church. Of course, he was a wunderkind. A this wunderkind? Is, yes, he was a wunderkind. And what about the brother? Was the brother a wunderkind too? I don't think so. We don't know about the no. brother. No, but, um, but he provided shelter for Bach and the food. And later on, um, from 14 years old, Bach, Bach moved to Lübeck, to the northern city in, uh, in Germany, and he was a choir boy. And so he learned a, a lot of cantatas and beautiful religious music. When I saw his home, and, and there was a big poster with the trio of family Bach, I saw that every person was a musician. It was not true that he was just some kind of fluke in the family, just son of a baker. It was no truth at all. So I saw that he was kind of the most successful from all this long tree of musicians. From 1450, 14, I saw some, some of his predecessors were already musicians. Some of them just played violin, some played keyboard instruments, some were singers, but all of them were musicians. So anything else you want to tell us about the concert? Because um, I'm going to encourage everybody to go to this concert. It's going to be on uh, March the 9th. It's at Congregation Beth Israel, and it's called Bach to Shul. Is there anything else that I should be telling people? Uh, probably people who watch this program know that Shul is, has a meaning of synagogue. It, it's Bach Shul, synagogue. And it's synagogue, and it's also school, it is right? Also it has, school, it has yes. two meanings. Shule, shule in German is school, and Shul in Yiddish is, is school. Is syna uh, right, is school. or vice versa. Vice versa, right. that's right. So uh, it is... Uh, not, I, I can promise, it will not be only educational program. It will be a wild, a virtuosic program with some beautiful areas, and also our organ. I love Best Israel organ, so get a chance to hear it. We've been speaking to Natasha Ulanovsky. She's the organist, and she's going to be playing Johann Sebastian Bach on March the 9th at Congregation Beth Israel. It starts at 6.45, and it's a 40-minute concert just before services. It's a great way to spend an evening, and you're going to be listening to a virtuoso on the Austin organ, which is also a historic organ. See you there.